Let's talk about the Freightliner FLD 120. Quite possibly one of the best owner operator trucks ever. Uh, it was a workhorse and it was easy to work on. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Hey everybody, so, you know, part of the history videos that, you know, so many of you guys like where I talk about trucking companies, trucking manufacturers, different things, pretty much all things trucking, I decided to do some shorter videos. Uh, I already did a video on Freightliner uh, and, you know, the history of where it came from and, and all that, but I wanted to do a video just about specific models, short short videos about specific models. And one of my favorites is the FLD 120. So the FLD model, when it came out in 1987, uh, it had the FLD 112 and the FLD 120. That actually stood for the distance from the front of, from the bumper to the back of the cab. I don't know how that worked because there was different sleeper variations. So yeah, I don't really know how that worked. And in this, I'm just talking about what we consider the FLD, which is this truck, you know, because the classic was also an FLD. That was the FLD 132 for the same reason, but I'm going to do classic as a whole separate thing. Classic was the first truck I ever drove legally <laughs> with, you know, with a license, actually with a permit, I was trained in an FL or in a uh, classic and it was the first truck I ever owned. So we'll save that for a whole nother video, but I want to talk about this truck and why this was so innovative. So I actually have two of them here, different scales, and they're from my collection up here. One's a Prime truck, one's a Jevic. You can actually see the trailers up there don't have the, uh, don't have the trucks behind them or hooked up to them, but I'll use the bigger one here. Although that is a pretty green on that Prime one, but the Jevic one here is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger scale. I don't know what scale it is. It doesn't matter. I don't care much. I'm not very specific in collecting specific trucks. I, I just, what I like, companies from the past, things like that, that's what I collect when I see them. And I could probably, you know, add 500 more trucks up there, and over time I want to add to it. But anyway, this truck was so innovative. I actually remember the first time I saw one. My dad, um, my dad was working for a company, a local small company, and he had an FLC Freightliner. And, uh, he got it or no, he didn't have that. He was driving a Volvo, a Volvo white, uh, conventional. And he got an FLC because the driver that was senior to him got a brand new FLD. And now that was in 87 or 88. So that wasn't the condo. The condo wasn't out yet. Uh, but it was beautiful. It was gray. It had the skirts down the side, the setback axle. I thought it was so cool. Uh, what made the truck maybe a little bit nicer for owner operators is it still had the hood long enough that you can get to the whole engine. So you could still work on these, but it had the setback axle to make turning easier. Better aerodynamics. The hood was slanted a bit more. You know, the fenders were, were rounded out a bit more to make it more aerodynamic. And really just... Uh, they were great workhorse trucks. And remember, this was the great time in trucking when you bought a truck and you could buy it the way you wanted to. You could get different brands of transmissions. You could, you know, Freightliner didn't make an engine. Um, Freightliner still doesn't make an engine, but they own Detroit. But most of the Freightliners back then, when the 12.7 Detroit came out, that's what they had. But you could get it with, now the FLD 112s had the smaller engines. They would have the Cummins N11 and the... Uh, Caterpillar or C10 or the C12, um, but the when you had the 120, you got the bigger engine. So the Detroit Series 60, um, the Cat 3406, uh, the uh, yeah, what did uh, Cummins, Cummins had the N14 at that time. So yeah, so you could get pretty much any configuration you wanted in this if you bought it new. Different transmissions, different speeds, different gear ratios, different. I mean, back then, you could order a truck pretty much any way you wanted it. Uh, you know, and actually, my dad always tells me, I've never seen a truly stripped down Freightliner. My dad said back in the day, Freightliner could strip down a truck like nobody else. Uh, <laughs> he said that the, the dashboard, you could actually get the cheapest dashboard, and it was nothing more than a little bit of hardened cardboard. 
So he said they really had ways of making it cheap, but this was a great truck. And in my opinion, this had the same interior that the Classic had, the same interior that they used forever in their cab overs. And I think it's one of the best interiors ever. That cockpit style, you know, like my Peterbilt, you gotta reach farther for everything. You know, the cab's a little bit wider than a, than a um, uh, Kenworth or a Peterbilt, you know, but that, that cockpit style, the way it came around, you know, you could almost from the shifter reach just about anything, you know, while you rest your hand there, but just a cool truck. Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasts out there and, uh, I'll show you a couple trucks and, uh, yeah, search out, uh, FLD life. I think his name is check out some of his videos and he's from Florida and he's Hispanic. I don't know. I don't know if he's Mexican or Cuban, but he is an expert on these trucks. I've watched some of his videos, and the reason that I tell you about him being Hispanic is because he does a lot of his videos in Spanish. But a lot of times he'll do them in Spanish and then in English, he says things. You know, so if you go on his video and it's all in Spanish, look for other ones. He does say this one's English, this one's not. But he's also great at doing the new epoxy floors and things like that. But he's pretty much a, a I love his videos. He's an FLD expert. And uh, yeah, just a great truck from the past. And, and yeah, they stopped making them in 01. Oh, also, this was the first truck to ever have the true condo sleeper. And that started in 1992. So pretty interesting. It says that they ran this up till 2010, although by then the Sentry had pretty much taken over as a more aerodynamic truck. And uh, yeah, just great truck. So hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to talk about some more. Actually, I'll do some of the trucks that I have back here uh, just in, in just a little bit shorter videos instead of talking about whole history of trucking. So hey, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And uh, comment, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If not, you can email me anytime at finchresources at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram under the Trucking Resources name. I'll catch you on the next one.